I've got stickers. <laughs> this video is all about Copilot in PowerPoint. What I'm going to do is take you through what I've learned from using it. There are some amazing features in here. Some of them are more valuable than others. So I'm going to share with you what I think it's most useful for. This is part of the license that is Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365, as well as Copilot Pro. There's one piece in here that you can't do in Copilot Pro. I'll give you a shout out about that. But honestly, the highest value things you can do with both licenses. Let's take a look at how this works. So we're going to look at two very different types of functionality that are available here. The first one is all about creating and editing your PowerPoint decks. The second one is about working with existing decks to ask questions, get information, summarize and synthesize information. So to start with here, when you first come in, you've got your Copilot icon and it prompts you to be able to create a presentation and create a presentation from a file. Now, this one about creating from a file is honestly the highest value thing I've seen. I'm going to come back to that. I want to show you this first just to give you a sense of what you can do with natural language. This is something that I think is good in certain circumstances, but for real business use cases that create from file is far more likely to work for you. So we're going to say create a presentation. I'm just going to get rid of that and paste something I've already done in here. Create a presentation about traveling to Melbourne, Australia. I'm going to run this in real time so that you get a sense of how this works. This is actually using generative AI predictive models to come up with things. So when you're asking it about a topic, you're getting that same experience of it being able to generate content based on those large language models. It's going to come up with a bunch of images here as well. So what we've got here, experience Melbourne, Australia, explore the famous street art of Hosier Lane, visit the historical Queen Victoria market. I've done this based on my own uh, hometown so that I can check it for accuracy. We've got some things here, the Melbourne Cricket Ground, the Royal Botanic Gardens, solid, uh, some good things about shopping and <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's, um, that is not representative of the bar scene in Fitzroy. <laughs> Okay, we'll just move on right past that. I think there's some kind of Rice Krispies muesli bar or something. It's not something that I'm familiar with. I actually did this once before I hit record. The nature of generative AI, of course, is that you're going to get a different result every time. I am actually just going to try something different here and start again and see if I can get a different result because I got a much more beautiful deck. Just to show you again with generative AI that you won't always get the same thing, <laughs> same thing every time. You'll see what it's doing though, is creating essentially a five slide deck. It's fairly lightweight on content, but it's giving you a structure. So if you want to create something quite simple as a starting point, easy first draft, it's, it's not bad. Here we go. This is, this is much better. Do you see the difference? I've done exactly the same prompt. This is a key learning with generative AI, the same prompt in a different moment, we'll give you something different. Let's see what we've got this time. That is, in fact, a picture of Melbourne, I believe. Uh, don't recognise where that one is. Two of the city on the free city circle tram, Botanical Gardens, Great Ocean Road. Yeah, again, those are goods. Come up with some different things. That is a pie. It's not really how we do pies in this country, but it's closer than whatever I got in the last one. Uh, sports culture, absolutely key to it. And... Oh, we've gone a bit literal there. The crown casino is not actually the jewel in the crown. All right. So what we can do now is I'm happier with this version. So what I'm going to do now is ask it to start editing some things. I've found if you try to ask it to edit the text in here, it can't do this. So if I say, for instance, add another point about the MCG, it just kind of won't do it. So the edit function, I'm hoping this is something that happens maybe in the future, just can't do that. But if we say add a slide about the MCG, it will do that. So we can add additional slides and it can actually cope with that quite well. While it's doing that, you'll see that it's also created speaker notes. So you've got some speaker notes in here, other things in there as well. It's put that in. We're going to arrange this again in a moment, but it's put that in here. Sports culture, that's a baseball bat, not a cricket bat. Uh, so the thing you can do in here is add an image uh, of a team playing cricket. We'll just change that in there. I haven't worked out yet how we can get it to replace the image, but if we do this, it will actually find a, a different image. One of the things that it suggests that's still baseball. Okay, 
if you don't like what it does, we can certainly uh, undo. You can just, you know, use your usual sort of undo commands in there to uh, to get <laughs> to get rid of that. Live demos with AI are, are really quite uh, fraught with danger. Let's try something else. Let's try in here to say, add a slide about uh, coffee shops and coffee culture. That's a big part of what happens in the city. We do love our coffee. We are, we are coffee snobs in here. So we'll put those things in here. Now, as you start to work through this, there is another feature in here that's been here for a while, sort of the original AI, if you like, with uh, designer in here. So again, that's mm, not really what coffee shops look like here. So there's a bit of an overlay of some of these images that are that are limited in, in where they're coming from in the web. You can certainly come in here and say, I want to change the picture from online sources and have a look in here for cricket images. If you use designer, this is actually something else that can also help you with changing the layout if you don't like the, the layout. So bear in mind that that's something there. And then on the right hand rail here, you can change between the designer and the co-pilot. Now I did say to start with that this kind of create from scratch thing isn't the jewel in the crown <laughs> of this thing. I think if you're doing something quite basic like this, it could be fine. The other thing you can do in here, if we switch back into Copilot after we've edited and added some things, is to come up here and ask it to organize. Now, if you want to find out what else it can do, we can click on this view prompts and you've got a bunch of different things in here. So create is giving you a suggestion of things. We can edit and you can add images of things in there and you can ask or view more prompts. We're gonna come back to that ask in a moment. If you go into view more prompts, you're gonna get a whole bunch of things that's coming from the Copilot Lab, which has saved prompts in there that can help you out. So far as I've browsed through this, there's not a heap in there for the editing in PowerPoint, but that's something that you might want to do. What we can do though, is come in here and give it a prompt to say, organize this presentation. And what it will do is rework things. So you can see that we've actually got our thing about cricket and our thing about sports aren't together. It's also able to add some other things in. So we'll, we'll see what happens here. I do enjoy that the little waiting icon colors are matching the co-pilot icon color. There we go. So now what it's done is grouped the slides into sections. So now we've got sections. It's actually added an agenda in here. Another, that's actually a picture of Melbourne. That's good, well done, thank you. Uh, this one is also, yeah, that looks like it could be Melbourne. There's a Telstra icon, I think that's I think that's it. And then we've got some other things in here and it's actually put in sort of culture and nightlife. Hasn't still quite organized there. So a little way to go on this being something useful. Let's switch to more of a business scenario here because as much as this is fun, it, it's a bit of a tricky one to try to, understand how you would really use. If, you, if you've got Copilot Pro though, and you're doing it for home use, I think this sort of creative presentation making could be quite useful, maybe for school assignments or things, I don't know, but let me know in the comments if you found a good use for that one. I'm much more of a fan of the create from a file. Now, the other thing before I move on to that though, is that if you come in here and do something, let's try something a little bit more businessy. If I say create a presentation about how to prepare and present a compelling technical demonstration. Let's see what we get this time. Some of it is in the art of the prompting too, because the more information you put into the prompting, the better result you're gonna get. So let's, uh, let's give this a moment to pull things together. Still working on it. <laughs> My decision to record this live and to not fast forward over these bits is probably going to be second guessing what we're doing. All right, now it's gone with technical in a different sense of perhaps what I meant there, but we've got an introduction, uh, understand the audience, determine their interests and needs. So, you know, as a, as a drafting, I think this is, you know, a bit more of a business use case here. I think if I was trying to put this together, this could actually be helping me with thinking through what it could do. Again, when I did this earlier, it came out with something different. Let's again, start with another blank one and change the prompt this time. So we're gonna come in here, create a presentation. I'm gonna click this while I, while I do this. So what it's actually doing now is 
I'm giving it more information. Focus on communication skills, showing the link between the technology and the business value of the customer, how to manage questions. So I'm giving it a lot more to work with. And as with all of these generative AI experiences, the prompt and the the more you give it and the more detail you give it is going to result in hopefully a better outcome living dangerously here. All right. So this time now, understand your audience. It's starting to add some more things. That's quite a nice image. That one's popped up again, but you'll see we're getting something a little bit different and a little bit more refined and it's picking up on key topics. So I've given it that structure and it's using the generative AI to come up with these things. All right, let's go into the part that I think is actually the more high value here, which is the piece where we say, let's create this from a document. So in a business use case, the idea that you've got some kind of document and you need to turn it into a presentation is something that's a real time saver. And I'm actually pretty impressed with how good this part is. So I'm going to go through about three or four different examples here just to show you what happens. So the first thing to be aware of here is that the file needs to be in your OneDrive or SharePoint of the organization where it's licensed. So I'm working here with an organizational license and I tried to put in a file that's in my personal OneDrive and you get this error message. So you do need the file to be in the same tenant in the same OneDrive as where your Copilot for Microsoft 365 license actually sits. We'll close that one down because I don't need that error sitting there anymore. So what we can do is you go create a presentation from file and what you'll get is a list of recent documents. I found this to be a bit hit or miss. Sometimes it comes up with one, sometimes it comes up with quite a few in here. It's bringing in things that I've recently modified, recently opened, things that people have recently sent to me. If you're lucky enough that the file you're working on is something you've been recently working on, you can choose it from that list. So I am going to go in here and choose this one as a starting point, which is a blog I wrote in 2022 about trends to watch in business applications, which was actually quite entertaining to to go back. So while it is spinning that up, let's take a look at the source material here. This was my blog, Top Trends to Watch in Business Applications for 2022. You'll see AI did (laughs) did actually get a mention there. Something that's certainly not sitting at number three in the way we talk about this stuff now. But you'll see it's a relatively simple document. It's a relatively simple blog. I haven't used any headings or structures. Those things can actually help with the outcome. But even so, if we close that down and go back into PowerPoint, you'll see what it's doing is picking up on. I've just used bold. I haven't used any kind of you know, styles or anything in there. And it's actually able to pick those things up generating the slides and let's see what we get out of this 90% nearly there it's actually quite quick as I said I'm doing this in real time it's quite quick for the amount of information and the amount of stuff that it's generating for you so there we go a nice header we've got the agenda introduction collaboration and business applications this is sort of a bullet point summary of what I had in there some of the formatting is a little bit inconsistent but again we can come in here and sort of you know don't forget we've got designer up our sleeve to go all right I'm going to give this a little bit of a once over and sort of tidy that up a bit and go with that same sort of thing there so you see how quickly you can start to sort of tidy those things up this is actually not bad you know it's a it's a pretty well structured document you could go in and change it into the other things you like uh, and play around with the design so let's try something a little bit more complicated now. And I wanted to try and show you something that is a little bit more depth of real business use cases without revealing any commercially private information. So this is an example perhaps of a training use case. I've actually taken a copy of something that's on Microsoft Learn. So I've taken this off a website, but let's say you've got a training document or training manuals of some kind, and you want to turn that into something that you can use. So this is a piece from Microsoft Learn on large language models. You'll notice importantly in here, there is a diagram as part of it, look out for that one. Hopefully if the AI is on my side, we're going to see an example of that. Another diagram in there. So this is longer now. This is a seven page document. So if your document is not in the frequently used list, what you need to do is it's saved in that OneDrive or SharePoint location where you're already working. You just come up here into this little share thing, copy link, and that will copy that to your clipboard. And now when I go back into my PowerPoint Copilot, I can come in here and say, 
I want to give it a second to come back up again. I want to create a presentation from a file and instead of picking from that list, I can just paste that link and then it will find that and, and do the same thing. So this is going to take a couple of minutes again and we'll see what it does. Again, with this one, I don't have any structure in there. I've just got some headings. It's literally a, a copy paste of text from a, a website in there. But you can see we've got some bigger headings and some smaller headings, some different sort of formatted things in here. So it's not straightforward text like the last one and those diagrams that we're looking out for there as well. So you'll see already it's doing a pretty good job of finding the different headings in there. While we're waiting for that to finish, let's just jump across and have a look at some of the best practice uh, guidelines of these things. So this is what Microsoft recommends. I'll pop the link in to the description below here that using the styles can actually help. And I have played around with this with documents that use those heading styles in Word. It does actually really help with the structure, although I'm getting pretty good results even without that including images that are relevant. So we're about to see that hopefully <laughs> happen. And we're going to come back to this part about starting with the, the template in a moment. Here we go. This one's quite pretty. Large language models and generative AI. So I've drafted 12 slides. Again, see with this one, we're getting a lot more content. When I just did the create a presentation based on, you know, me typing in something, you just get those five slides to start with. So we've got a pretty nice agenda. Introduction to large language models, transformer models, all of this just coming straight off the deck. Oh, I don't know why we've got a dog and a cat there, but that's very cute. <laughs> and look at this. That's the image that came from that deck. So if you were working on a training scenario, needing to present content back to people, I think this is a really strong use case. I'm actually really loving this as a way of, of doing this sort of document generation. Let's have a look at one more thing here just to sort of step it up uh, another level. This is something, again, I've just got from a uh, local website here in Australia. This is a government funding initiative where you can apply for funding. So trying to come up with something that replicates the idea of a grant application or an RFP submission again, but just using something that's publicly available. So again, there's a lot of detail in this one. No pictures this time, but we've got nine pages in here. Again, I'm just going to grab that link in there and we're going to come back into a blank PowerPoint presentation, create a presentation from file and put that one in. And I will just fast forward this one because I think you've got the sense of it and I don't want to sit here waiting for the video to go. All right, and we're back. That took maybe a minute or two, which given how much you'll see that it's done is, is pretty good. You'll see I've got a message here. I completed some of your request, but I'll need more practice before I can do everything in it. So you will actually start to hit a limit. This is not that the file is too big. If we have a look at the Microsoft documentation, it actually says it works best with Word documents that are less than 24 meg. This document is well under 24 meg, but I think just the sheer volume of information in there. I did try this one earlier and it, it actually was happy to do it all. So again, sometimes with these things in the early stages here, it's worth just starting again and having another go. You saw what happened earlier with my Melbourne example and the different thing that came out of it. So what we've got now, again, the agenda, the overview, again, some pretty reasonable images, I think. So there's a lot going on in here. This has actually created a very, very long deck with all of these things. The other thing to note here is that the, we've got the speaker notes. So this is really good. It's actually giving us the original content that it's referring to, and then a nice summary of these things. So you could actually, like, this is really getting you a long way. Again, if you had to, you know, you've got, you were the funding body here and you needed to present this to people, you'd want to do that designer and give it a once over with the design, but it's really taken a lot of the, the legwork out of that for you. Now, what if you want to use your corporate template or your corporate brand? This is the part that you do need to have the Microsoft 365 Copilot for. You can't do this part with the just the Copilot Pro. The documentation also says you can't do this part with Copilot Pro, but I can see it in my Copilot Pro options. So the other thing we can do here is to work with your branded template, your corporate template. This one is a bit hit or miss, and I think there's a lot of art in that I'm going to delve into another time in another video in how to get your template right for this, because I've seen some good examples of this and some less good examples of this. So we're going to come in here and choose a new 
template. Let's say that's our corporate template that's sitting in here. And let's just come in here now and choose the shorter one just to save a little bit of time. I'm going back to my original sort of five trends to watch uh, blog to see what happens in formatting it in the template. So here we go. It's going to generate the outline doing all the same things. And what it should do is actually draft it into, into this template here. So here we go. It's actually put some animation in there, which I quite like. Let's take a look at how this is fitting with that template. This is actually as good as I've seen. That's perhaps a little bit strange. I don't know what's going on with that one. Um, but this is fitting that template. So what you need to do here, if you do want to use your branded template, you can start with that. But the thing here is that I've, I've used this with a couple of different templates. And depending on what the layout is in your template, sometimes it comes out a little bit less than <laughs> less than ideal. So again, there's documentation here and I will put this in the link about setting up your organizational asset library. There are some steps in here, but with the minimum template requirements, you need at least these four things in your template. And then we've got some optimizations in here to work better. So if this is something you do want to use with your organization, do have a look at the documentation in here, because if you just, it's worth throwing your corporate template at it. And I did that our, our corporate template doesn't look anything like this kind of thing and it did come out a little bit strange so if this is something you want to use you do need to be able to do that let's take a look now at the other side of this which is around being able to ask questions and summarize information if you're getting value out of this video please give it a like it helps it to reach more people who can hopefully learn how to do cool things with Copilot in PowerPoint. This is my slide deck from a community conference that I recently presented at. This one is quite lightweight, and then I'm going to show you a more complex example. So you'll see there's very little text on the screen. I actually don't have much in the way of speaker notes. You'll find there's a few things in there, but there's a lot of screenshots in here and quite limited speaker notes. So if I come in here to my Copilot, and what we're going to do this time is ask it to summarize the presentation. So this is something that if you've been handed a great big deck, and we'll have a look at the next one as well. This is a really good way of getting around it and using generative AI to summarize things for you is a pretty core use case. So we'll see we've got these things in here. It's actually giving me the references for where those things are coming from. And then it actually in doing that summary has got to know things a little bit and it's giving me some prompts in here of questions that I can ask. So what are the limitations of using websites as a data source for generative answers? It's actually finding that in the deck and you can ask other types of questions in there as well. Let's take a look at a more complex example. I'm just going to hit the button so that it can do this while I'm talking. Summarize this presentation. This one is 88 slides long. There's a lot more detail in here. If you're into Copilot Studio, this is an amazing resource. This is done by the Copilot Studio team at Microsoft, their implementation guide available publicly from their GitHub. So a heap of uh, resources in here, and you'll see a lot of detail in here compared to the one that I was looking at before. Not much in the way of speaker notes, in fact, nothing. So all of the detail is sitting on the slides here, but it's got 88 slides worth of awesomeness in there. So here we go. Look at this really good way of summarizing all of this. So this is something you can use. You can also just choose to copy that. So if you were needed to, you know, reuse that somewhere else, you could do that. And again, some questions here. Let's come in here and ask sort of a more specific question rather than one that it's just suggesting for us. Why would you use generative answers? So there's a couple of really good slides in here that sort of talk about how generative AI is changing. So I'm hoping it will pick up from those ones in there, but I can be clicked anywhere in the deck. I don't actually have to locate that. The whole point here is that this is something that's understanding the content and able to retrieve that information for you. So according to the presentation, drum roll please, generative answers unlock new use cases for co-pilots and so on. So that's a that's a, a very good example. Let's see where it's getting that from. Why do we ask these questions? So it's got those things in there as well. Let me know what you think is most useful from your experience or from what I've shown you here, what you're more likely to use and more co-pilot awesomeness here in this video on co-pilot for Excel. Thanks for watching.